What's going on everybody? Today we're going to be diving into one of my favorite places in the world, Southern Utah. Utah is home to the Mighty Five National Parks, which include Arches, Canyonlands, Capitol Reef, Bryce Canyon, and Zion, alongside more than 40 state parks scattered across the state. But there is so much more to this incredibly diverse and adventurous state. In this video, I'll be going over my favorite places in Southern Utah, including bucket list destinations, the best hikes, places in and outside of the parks, and a handful of hidden gems. This will be a comprehensive Utah travel guide with all of the information you'll need to visit these places. Real quick though, if you could give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel, I'd really appreciate it. And I wanna give a big thank you to Onyx Backcountry for sponsoring this video, but more on that later. Let's dive right in. This is my top 50 hikes and places to visit in Southern Utah. First up is gonna be Delicate Arch, which is arguably the most iconic place on this entire list. It can even be found on the Utah license plate. This will be an extremely crowded hike pretty much any time of day, but it wouldn't be a trip to Utah without going here. This hike is going to be 3.2 miles round trip with 629 feet of elevation gain. If you're up for hiking a little in the dark, I'd recommend going to Delicate Arch for sunrise or sunset. Sunrise if you want to try and beat a little bit of the crowds and get a good parking spot, and sunset if you want that beautiful golden light without the early wake up call, but you will be hiking back a little bit in the dark. Next up is gonna be Reflection Canyon, a beautiful desert hike inside Glen Canyon National Recreation Area that will take you all the way from Escalante to Lake Powell. To get to the trailhead, you're gonna to have to drive two hours and 15 minutes from the town of Escalante. It's gonna be 50 miles of driving down Hole in the Rock Road, a miserable washboard dirt road. After the journey to the trailhead, the hike itself is 16-ish miles round trip with 1,564 feet of elevation gain. The distance differs depending on who you ask and there's a bit of route finding, so it's good to be mentally prepared for 14 to 18 miles. It is extremely important because of the route finding on this trail to make sure you have offline maps downloaded. I think the best for this is gonna be Onyx, although the vertical gain is very spread out, so it feels like it's mostly a flat hike. I'd say about half the people that hike reflect Canyon do it as a two-day overnight trip camping out by the viewpoint some love doing it that way but we did this as a day hike it's a very long hike to carry a tent sleeping bag sleeping pads extra water and a jet boil for us it just made more sense to do this as a day hike and we have zero regrets we left a few hours before sunrise and hiked in the dark to catch the sun rising at the canyon. And my last note on this is pack extra water. There isn't a single place along the trail to filter water. And if you're doing this as an overnight, you have to take that into consideration that you're gonna have to carry probably six to eight liters of water per person. At number three, we have Cutler Point to the Great Chamber. This is an extremely unique place to visit in Utah and an awesome adventure all around. Located outside of Kanab, this hike is going to be around half a mile with maybe 200 or so feet of elevation gain round trip. The Great Chamber is only accessible with a four-wheel drive vehicle or a vehicle that can drive on deep sand. The sand is deep and this is a relatively remote place, so I wouldn't push it if you think your car can't make it. Once you're in the chamber, it's like a big playground. There's a massive sand hill inside a perfectly shaped cave. It makes for some amazing photos and it's really fun just running up and down the sand. If you don't have a car with four wheel drive, don't worry. You can book a day tour to visit here from either Kanab or Page. At number four, we have Mystic Hot Springs, which is located in Monroe, Utah, and it's one of the more unique geothermal hot springs I've been to. It's much more than just hot springs. There's camping, there's RV sites, old converted buses that you can stay in, each one having its own little personality, artwork, and much more here. The hot springs themselves are on the smaller side, they're mostly single person bathtubs built into the rock and there's less than 10 of them. Other than these, there's two connected larger pools that can accommodate groups, but I'd assume there's not room for more than 25 people total between these two pools. Mystic Hot Springs is open 24 seven for soaking, but it's only available by reservation. So you do need to buy this ahead of time. It's $25 for adults and $12.50 for children 12 and under. And when you're making a reservation, you can make it for a group up to four people. The pricing for overnight accommodation does differ whether you want a tent site, an RV site, or one of their unique buses, so all of that information can be found on their website. 
Next up is the Narrows, which is my favorite hike in Zion National Park. Zion is one of the Mighty Five National Parks, and this is one of the most famous hikes in the park. At the very end of the Shuttle Scenic Drive, you will walk roughly a mile along the river before you reach the Slot Canyons, which marks the start of the Narrows. From here, you'll be hiking in ankle deep to waist deep water, depending on the conditions, amount of rain the park got that season, and the time of year. The nice thing about the Narrows is, Although you can do the entire 16 mile hike, you don't really need to. Most people only go a half mile or so and the views don't disappoint. I think the furthest I've ever gone is about two miles each way. It's a great place for long exposure photography and a fun way to cool off during the summer's heat. After the Narrows, we have Moonscape Overlook, which is one of the most amazing sunrise spots in Hanksville. Hanksville is a small town located in central Utah between the towns of Green River and Escalante. This is an underrated travel hub and there's so much to do in Hanksville. Throughout this list, I'll have a few locations from here, but for sunrise, this is the spot. You can also drive right to it. Most cars could likely make it, but it would be much easier if you had a few inches of clearance for some of the parts where it dips pretty deep. Here's a screenshot on a map of where it is because it doesn't immediately pop up on Google Maps, but it's essentially just the end of Moon Overlook Road, the turnoff for which is across from Factory Butte. At number 7 we have Mossy Cave, which in my opinion is the best hike in Bryce Canyon. Maybe not the best, but it's for sure the most unique. This 0.9 mile round trip hike with 121 feet of elevation gain will take you to a beautiful crystal clear waterfall under bright orange hoodoos. And then you'll also get to see Mossy Cave itself, where you can see a natural cave with frozen stalagmites and stalactites. Next up, also in Bryce Canyon, is Sunset Point. Bryce is a great park because you can see the entire park in one day. Most of the park is just viewpoints and short hikes, and after a while, it kind of all looks the same. So if I had to pick one place inside the main park road, I would go to Sunset Point. It's a beautiful overlook that will show you a sea of hoodoos and if you'd like to go to, for a short hike from here, you can descend the trail right below the viewpoint and see Thor's Hammer, Wall Street, and Two Bridges, which are all really cool destinations, all in the same place, so you get a lot of bang for your buck here. At number 9 we have Temple of the Sun and Moon inside Capitol Reef National Park. This is not on the main park road, you will need to drive on a rough dirt road to visit. I've made it here in a 4Runner and a GMC Safari Astro Van. Most cars could probably make it about 90% of the way pending time of year and conditions, but the last 10% of the drive gets a little bit more serious. Once you're here, you won't really need to hike unless you want to. The towering rock formations are amazing and if you're up for an early morning, I highly recommend going here for sunrise as the early sun just beams onto the temples giving them a vibrant bright orange glow. At number 10 we have the Vortex, which is a very unique hike located outside of Gunlock. You'll need to drive on a dirt road to reach the trailhead, but any car can make it. The road's not bad, and we did this in my Corolla. The hike is 2.3 miles round trip with 524 feet of elevation gain, so it's a pretty easy one. However, there is some route finding that you'll need to pay attention to, and there's not cell service, so it's really important to have offline trail maps downloaded. Again, I'd recommend using Onyx Backcountry for this. Although with the route finding, this is a really fun hike because you're just hiking along rocks and you get to scramble a little bit. It's not just a normal walk on a trail. At the Vortex, itself you're gonna find three big bowl formations it's a great trail to do for sunset plus when we did it at that time we had the trail all to ourselves didn't see a single other person sadly I did notice that there was quite a bit of names and things etched into the rock at the vortex so I want to point out that even though you're gonna see this if you visit please do not do this it's vandalism and it takes away from the beauty of these wild places it's always really really important to practice leave no trace 
Before we get on the next one, I do want to mention that I have so many travel guides on my channel. So again, if you aren't already subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. I have individual top 10s for all of the Mighty Five parks. I have top 10s for places all over the country that are great for road trips and some top 10s that are from around the world. So tons of travel guides, hiking guides, and vlogs on the channel. So I hope you stick around to check those out. But for our next one, we're not going too far from the vortex. We're heading to St. George. Our next hike is the Candy Cliffs and Yon flats located in dixie national forest this is a 5.3 mile round trip hike with 800 feet of elevation gain there's some dirt road driving to get here but again we made this one in our corolla so there shouldn't be any issues for anyone getting to the trailhead it's a stunning hike and once you're there it's just rich colorful rocks as far as you can see it's a great place for landscape photography it's just an open canvas waiting to be explored After Candy Cliffs is gonna be Gooseneck State Park. This is a great half day stop outside of Mexican Hat. There isn't a ton of infrastructure in this area of Utah as far as restaurants, gas stations, and amenities go. So if you are gonna visit here, I'd make sure you have your car packed with everything you need. Goosenecks has an entrance fee of $5 per vehicle. So if you are gonna camp overnight, just all the more reason to make sure you have all the stuff you need packed ahead of time. At number 13, we have the Golden Cathedral off of Hole in the Rock Road in Escalante, Utah. I don't think our Corolla could have made it to this trailhead, but it's not nearly as gnarly as the drive to the previously mentioned Reflection Canyon. A few inches of clearance would definitely help. This is a 9.1 mile round trip hike with 1,581 feet of elevation gain. And it's worth noting, you're gonna descend first and then you're gonna have all of your elevation gain on the hike back. So you gotta make sure you save some energy for that. Typically we start most of our hikes in the dark so we can photograph sunrise, but this is one that I'd recommend going midday. It will be hotter, but as far as photography goes, in my opinion, this isn't a sunrise or sunset spot. There's also about 10 or so river crossings to get to the Golden Cathedral. I lost track because there were so many, I think it was 10 or 12. A few of them are even waist deep, so you should definitely pack accordingly. And again, for this, you're really gonna wanna make sure you have offline maps download. I wanna hop in here and tell you more about Onyx Backcountry. Onyx is a hiking app that provides you with hiking, backpacking, and ski tour routes with trail specs, elevation changes, terrain maps, offline maps, waypoints, and so much more. The app has more than 650,000 miles of trails and more than 1,500 adventures to help you plan your next activity. My personal favorite feature is the offline maps. Free and I consistently do trails that go anywhere from five to 25 miles in the backcountry, and we almost never have cell service, so it's crucial to us to have a reliable offline map feature to make sure we're staying on trail and know our surroundings. Another thing I like about the offline maps feature is that you can download a map that has a five mile wide radius with high resolution, a 10 mile radius with medium resolution, and a 150 mile radius with low resolution. So not only will you have your trail accessible, but all nearby trails and terrain at your fingertips. You can download Onyx for free, but if you wanna access all of their amazing premium features, you can sign up for their elite membership with the link down below and get 20% off of your purchase. Thank you Onyx, and now we're gonna hop back into the video. Next up is Quail Creek, a beautiful water oasis outside of Hurricane, Utah. This is state park costs $15 to enter unless you have the Utah State's Park Pass, which I believe is $80 or $100, and that is good for the entire calendar year. But if you're just coming for the day, it's $15, and you can camp here for $28 per night. Something I highly recommend to do here is to rent a kayak or a paddleboard, or if you're local to the area, you can bring your own. This is also a great place for drone photography. Hermits are relatively easy and cheap to get at the visitor center or the ranger entrance station. The colors of the water are just out of this world. It's truly an oasis in the middle of the Red Rock Desert. At number 15, we have the Bentonite Hills, which in some regards are rock formations that you can find scattered across the entire state. But the area that most people know these for and the area with most of the Bentonite Hills would be just outside of Hanksville. There's a place called the Mars Research Station that you can find on Google Maps, which I want to note is private property. But just a mile or two past this, the dirt road continues where you can find the Bentonite Hills everywhere. 
Exploring these really makes you feel like you're on another planet. The colors are just beautiful and the formations are out of this world. And during sunrise or sunset, when the golden glow of the sun really comes out, it really brings out the red, purple, and blue colors in the hills. And close by to the Bentonite Hills for our next stop is Factory Butte, a beautiful standalone desert rock butte between Hanksville and Caneville. This is such a fun area of Utah. Compared to other places on this list, Factory Butte is kind of in the middle of nowhere, but it's a great place for wild camping, hiking, dirt biking, riding ATVs, and all types of photography. I've been here plenty of times and it'll never get old. Next on our list is just next door, and that's going to be North Caneville Mesa, which is very similar to Factory Butte, but instead of being a standalone tower, North Caneville Mesa is a much bigger butte that is miles long once you're at the summit. The best part too is that you can actually climb to the top of North Caneville Mesa and get above everything in the area. You're going to get above the desert rock formations below, and you're going to see Capitol Reef in the distance and it's gonna make for some of the most unique summit views you could ask for. The hike is filled with extremely loose dirt and scree. There's a bunch of route finding and there is some class three climbing towards the top. So this is not a beginner hike by any means, but if you're up for it and you like peak bagging, then this is for you. Roughly a two to three mile round trip hike, but it has around 1200 feet of elevation gain. So it's a steep one. And just because of the terrain, this will take longer than your average two to three mile hike. After this, we're heading to Kodachrome Basin, which is the most underrated state park in southern Utah in my opinion. Located just 30 minutes from Bryce Canyon City, this park often stays in the shadows of Bryce Canyon, but it's not one you want to overlook. It's filled with towering desert spires. It's a great under the radar place for hiking, scenic views, and off the grid camping. Moving southwest, next up is Hilldale, Utah. Hilldale is right on the border with Arizona. It's an awesome little hidden gem close to Zion National Park. Hilldale is where Zion Glamping Adventures is located, which is an amazing glamping accommodation if you're visiting Zion or the St. George area. We glamped here for four days and loved every single second of it. This is also a great place to go off-roading and ride ATVs, and a few other great places to visit in the area include Maxwell Park, El Cap, Squirrel Canyon, and my favorite, the Water Canyon Trail. At number 20, we have Kanara Falls, which is one of my all-time favorite waterfall hikes in Utah. The hike is 3.7 miles round trip with 649 feet of elevation gain and you'll get to see two beautiful waterfalls, both with ladders to climb up. And through the entire hike, you will navigate surreal slot canyons with some of the smoothest and most aesthetically pleasing rock formations. I've done this hike in winter, spring, and summer, and summer is definitely the best. The water's freezing cold in the winter and spring, and in the summer, the water's just refreshing, which is really nice. This hike is very popular, and it has brought a ton of traffic to the local town, which the town doesn't necessarily have all of the infrastructure to handle the amount of traffic, so there was a permit system put into place. And please just practice leave no trace when you're visiting here and really everywhere else on this list, and please be respectful to the locals and the places you're visiting. The permit system is easy. You're essentially just buying tickets online. They're non-refundable and they must be purchased in advance, but they only cost $12 per person with kids under three being free and the hike is limited to 150 people per day to keep traffic manageable. Number 21, we're moving back to Zion National Park and we're going to be hiking the Emerald Pools. This three mile round trip hike with 620 feet of elevation gain might be one of my favorites in the park after the Narrows. I've visited Zion about maybe half a dozen times before I ever did this trail. I never saw photos, never heard much about it, so I just never did it. But man, was I amazed when we finally did this trail. Sure, it's busy and crowded, but the pools and waterfalls are pristine. There are three on the hike and I recommend going to all of them. Each one is unique in its own way. This is a great hike to do one to two hours after sunrise and then the sun will beam onto the waterfalls and it's just a very cool hike.
Next up is Moki Dugway, which is just outside of Mexican Hat, and right next to Gooseneck State Park that I mentioned earlier. Moki Dugway is a scenic drive that is part of Highway 261 in Utah. This is located near Natural Bridges National Monument. Some people will say that this drive is very scary, but I actually think it's awesome. There's no guardrails, which is likely why most people say it's sketchy, but it's also a very easy two-wheel drive dirt road that I would argue any car can make it. The road has so many switchbacks that are really cool to see from the top of the road. Once you're reaching the top of the road, there's a few viewpoints. It's a great place to stop, get out, enjoy the view, maybe have lunch up here, and all around it's just a great scenic drive to do after you visit Gooseneck State Park below. At 23, we're gonna be going back to Moab and visiting Double Arch, located inside Arches National Park. Just like Delicate Arch, this is a classic and a must visit if you're going to Moab or Arches. Visiting Double Arch will be a quick one to two hour stop. It's only a 0.6 mile round trip hike with 95 feet of elevation gain, but it is mostly flat. A lot of that elevation gain is gonna mainly depend on how much of the rocks you climb once you're inside Double Arch. Next up is Marlboro Point, which is also in Moab. This is an incredible spot located between Dead Horse State Park and Canyonlands National Park. It's a viewpoint that has endless stunning views of the canyon below, the nearby buttes, and all the rock towers surrounding it. To visit this viewpoint, you are gonna need four wheel drive and probably high clearance too. We made it Relatively no problem in a Toyota 4Runner, but anything less than this, I probably wouldn't even attempt to drive the road. Maybe a Subaru could make it, but if I had a Subaru, I probably wouldn't test it out. The road was pretty gnarly. At number 25, we have Corona Arch, which is also in Moab, but it's out west on a back road, so while it's a very popular hike and trail, it's not nearly as trafficked as Arches National Park. The hike is 2.4 miles round trip with 482 feet of elevation gain, so it's a nice and quick moderate hike. Along the way, you're gonna climb a ladder that ascends some of the rocks, that's always fun, and then just prior to arriving to Corona Arch, you're gonna pass Bowtie Arch on the left side of the trail, so you get to see a few awesome things on this relatively short hike. Corona Arch itself is huge. It's pretty similar to Delicate Arch if I had to compare it to any. It's not quite as iconic, obviously, but the shape and size, I'd say it's pretty similar, but with less people. Number 26, we have Mesa Arch, an iconic hike in Canyonlands Island in the Sky District. This is the best sunrise spot in the Moab area in my opinion. The hike itself is 0.7 miles round trip with 88 feet of elevation gain. Mesa Arch is one of the most popular hikes in Canyonlands, so be prepared for the crowds, but it's still worth it. The best time of day to go is definitely sunrise as the sun rises behind the LaSalle Mountains in the distance and it lights up the arch, giving it a beautiful orange glow and sun star. It's an amazing morning stop and it makes for some awesome photos. Next up, also in Canyonlands, is Druid Arch. This is further south in the Needles District of the park. Geographically, it's not that far, but because of the terrain and the canyons, you have to drive south towards Monticello. So it's a one hour and 45 minute drive from Moab, and for reference from our previous spot, it's a two and a half hour drive from Mesa Arch Trailhead. This hike totals out to be 9.7 miles round trip with 1,446 feet of elevation gain, but the unique arch here is worth every single step. And just towards the end of the hike, when you're approaching the arch, there is some rock scrambling, but it's pretty easy and everyone should be able to do this part. But otherwise, the trail is really easy the rest of the way. At number 28, we have Dixie Rock, located on the north side of town in St. George. This is a really cool hangout spot in town. It doesn't take much effort to get here. One of the times that Bree and I stayed in St. George, it was only a two minute drive from our hotel. It really just sits on the north side of town overlooking all of St. George. Dixie Rock is a great place for enjoying sunset, a picnic, hiking, and even some rock climbing. There's a cool steel bridge connecting some of the rocks and there's some phenomenal scrambling that you can mess around on. And it's pretty low to the ground so it's not too dangerous of kind of climbing or bouldering. It's really just like a big playground that's great for people of all ages.
Next up, we're headed back to Escalante where we have the Cosmic Ashtray. This hike is 8.3 miles round trip with 882 feet of elevation gain. For this, I cannot stress enough the importance of having Onyx offline maps downloaded to your phone. There's a ton of route finding on this hike and it's extremely easy to get lost. There are different footpaths everywhere and cairns all over, so it's hard to know which path to follow without the offline maps and you don't want to stray too far away from the trail. Once you're at the Cosmic Ashtray itself, you'll be greeted with one of the most unique views in all of Utah. You can climb down into the ashtray and explore the deep orange sand inside, and you're just gonna feel like you're on another planet. When we did this hike, we actually backpacked it and spent a night out here, which if you're up for it, I highly recommend. At number 30, we have Toadstool Hoodoos. This is right near the southern border with Arizona. We actually visited Toadstool Hoodoos while on a weekend trip in Page, but if you're driving between Page or Monument Valley and Zion National Park, you're gonna pass right by this trailhead. It's definitely worth the quick stop, and the trail is only 1.8 miles round trip with 141 feet of elevation gain. I'd say it's a pretty easy hike and very family friendly in case you're traveling with the kiddos. Once you reach the Hoodoos, you can explore around and just enjoy the surreal landscapes and take some awesome photos. Close by to Toadstool Hoodoos is our next location, Lone Rock. This is even closer to the Arizona border. When you're driving here, you're actually going to be in Arizona until you take that turn into Lone Rock. There's an entrance fee, which is $30 for a one to seven day entrance pass and $14 per night to camp on a first come first serve basis. Lone Rock is a beautiful rock formation on Lake Powell that looks like a massive tombstone. It's an overlanding paradise. Every time I visited, there's been 50 to 100 rigs from converted minivans and SUVs to sprinter vans, RVs, and bigger custom built rigs. It's a great place to meet other people and a good place to enjoy a waterside campsite for the night. After this, we have Hickman Bridge, which is located back in Capitol Reef National Park. This is an awesome hiking trail that's one of the easier ones in the park. The trail is well maintained. It's 1.7 miles round trip with 416 feet of elevation gain. And in Capitol Reef, this is my favorite arch hike. The views are amazing on this entire trail and the arch is just beautiful. There is one other rock arch trail in the park called Cassidy Arch, but my favorite of these is gonna be Hickman Bridge. So teach their own, or if you have time, you could check out both. Our next spot, Navajo Knobs, is actually going to be along the trail for Hickman Bridge. Both of these places start at the same trailhead, but Navajo Knobs is a few miles further than Hickman Bridge. On the way to the bridge, you're going to see a fork in the trail where you're going to want to take the trail on the right hand side that will have you continue on to Navajo Knobs. This hike totals up to 9.1 miles round trip with 2,139 feet of elevation gain. Navajo Knobs is a great way to get an aerial perspective of the park. From the top of the trail, you're going to be greeted with amazing views of Capitol Reef's landscapes in every single direction as far as you can see. At number 34, we have Moki Cave, located just 8 minutes north of Kanab. Moki Cave costs $5 to enter, but it's absolutely worth it to see authentic Native American artifacts found in southern Utah. There's also dinosaur tracks that you can see inside the cave that were found less than 20 miles from here. The other thing we really enjoyed seeing was the fluorescent mineral display. It's fascinating to see the colors they portray when shown underneath in ultraviolet light. This is a really cool cave to check out. It's a great family friendly place and you can probably only spend 30 minutes to an hour here and you'll get to see everything. Next up, we have Pioneer Park in St. George, Utah. This is very close to Dixie Rock, actually. Pioneer Park has a few different arches in the rock formations and a handful of slot canyons to explore. This, similar to Dixie Rock, this really is just a big playground and one of the best places to spend an afternoon in town. There's also a ton of established single pitch sport climbing routes and top roping routes, as well as some short hiking trails and rocks to climb around on. At 36, we have Crystal Geyser in Green River, Utah, which is just under an hour north of Moab. 
Crystal Geyser is a unique and rare geothermal feature. It's one of only a few geysers in the world that is not fed by a hot spring, but instead erupts due to a buildup of carbon dioxide in the underground reservoirs. The geyser erupts at regular intervals, shooting water up to 60 feet into the air, and is a popular destination for tourists and outdoor enthusiasts. Visitors can observe the geyser from a viewing platform located nearby. The platform provides a safe and accessible way to see the geyser and offers panoramic views of the surrounding landscape, including the Green River and the surrounding desert. Next is Coral Pink Sand Dunes, which is another phenomenal state park to visit. This state park is known for its vast sand dunes that have a shade of coral pink to the color of them. They're really beautiful, and at golden hour during sunrise or sunset, the pink colors of the dunes really shine. To visit, you're going to have to pay $10 day fee or show your Utah State's park pass. And if you'd like to camp here, it ranges from $25 to $50 per site, depending on the site you have and the time of year. The best things to do here are hike out onto the dunes, rent ATVs and go off-roading, or get a sandboard and ride down the dunes. This is a really fun spot and a great place for the family kids are going to love riding down the dunes and if you don't want to get all sandy there is a viewing platform near the parking lot so you can see all the beautiful landscapes from afar. Next up is the Red Reef Trail located just outside of St. George and Hurricane. This hike is 2.2 miles round trip with 219 feet of elevation gain. Bree and I actually found out about this hike a few years ago after seeing a photo of the hike on the cover of a magazine in our hotel in St. George. We knew we had to find this trail after seeing it and hike it. It's a beautiful canyon trail filled with little pools of water along the way. The entire hike has incredible landscapes and towards the end you can climb an area with a rope and steps built right into the rock, making it a very fun and adventurous trail. We have heard sometimes there's a waterfall here at the climbing area, but when we visited the water levels were low, so sadly we didn't get to see this. But even without that, this hike is still amazing and I still highly recommend it. And if you get to see the waterfall, that's just a bonus. Next up is Castle Valley and my favorite rock formation inside the valley, Castleton Tower. Castle Valley is a 35 minute drive east of downtown Moab along Route 128. The valley is part of the LaSalle Mountain Scenic Drive so you'll get some incredible valley and mountain views. The drive is awesome and once you're inside the valley this is a great place to go hiking, off-roading and rock climbing. There's plenty of trails and tons of iconic rock climbing routes here including climbing Castleton Tower itself. At number 40, we have Dead Horse State Park in the Patash Ponds. This state park is located between Arches and Canyonlands and is a 40 minute drive from downtown Moab. Dead Horse is a great pit stop along your Moab adventures. There's no activities or hiking to do here really. It's just a beautiful viewpoint to drive out to. So you can't come to Moab and not see this. When you're at the viewpoint, you'll be on a desert plateau overlooking the canyons thousands of feet below you. It is just surreal. And in the distance, in the direction of the LaSalle Mountains, you will see the Patash Ponds. The Patash Ponds are man-made evaporation ponds used in the production of Patash, a valuable mineral used in fertilizers and other industrial applications. You can see the Patash Ponds from Dead Horse State Park or while driving the Schaefer Canyon Trail if you want to get up close and personal with them. And the Schaefer Canyon Trail is what connects Canyonlands to Moab via back roads, so this is another great way to get right next to them. Next up, we have Valley of the Gods. This is also located just outside of Mexican Hat. It's a backcountry area that is a hidden gem filled with views similar to Monument Valley, but much lesser known. There's a beautiful scenic drive you can do through the valley, it's 17 miles, and it'll take you one to two hours. If the road conditions are dry, most cars can do the drive, but if conditions aren't good, you will need four wheel drive or some extra clearance. <laughs> After Valley of the Gods is Monument Valley, which is very comparable to Valley of the Gods, but this is much more well known and much more established. Monument Valley is also in the ending of the movie Forrest Gump, so this is an iconic Utah travel destination you need to visit. This park has sandstone towers that range from 400 to 1,000 feet tall. The area is filled with so many desert rock buttes, it's beautiful. Monument Valley is spread across the border of Utah and Arizona, so it's worth visiting both areas. It's a great place for photography, hiking, and exploring the history of the Navajo.
At number 43, we have Fisher Towers back in Moab. Fisher Towers is an incredibly scenic area between Moab and Grand Junction, and it's also close to Castle Valley. The main hike here is going to be the Fisher Towers Trail, which is 4.2 miles round trip with 1,469 feet of elevation gain. It'll take you to Balance Rock, the Alien, and the most famous rock on the trail, the Titan. There's also some incredible rock climbing here with a few iconic multi-pitch routes, and there were a few different movies filmed here that you can see on the signs and read more about. Next up at 44 is Goblin Valley, a unique state park located between Green River and Hanksville. This state park is $10 per day. You can camp here if you'd like, and they also have some glamping yurts that you can stay in. The yurts look like they are straight out of Star Wars, sitting between the Unreal Rock formation built over millions of years. Goblin Valley always makes for some really cool photography. Drone permits are also really easy to obtain here. You just inquire and pay the fee at the visitor center. Every time I've come here, I've always photographed the yurts, climbed around these rocks over here and the rock formations, and then afterwards, I head down the park road to the Valley of the Goblins for a sunset hike through the Goblin Rock formations. At number 45, we have Snow Canyon State Park, located just northwest of St. George. This is probably my favorite state park in the whole state. I've always thought this could be a national park if the park services wanted it to be. There are slot canyons, petrified dunes, white rock canyons, red rock buttes, and even volcanoes. This park is so diverse and there are a handful of incredible hiking trails. My favorites include Cinder Cone Volcano, White Rocks Trail, Scout Cave, and Jenny's Canyon. Next up is Belly of the Dragon, located just outside of Orderville and Mount Carmel Junction. This is a cool hike just off the side of the road on Route 89. If you would like to do the entire hike, it's 1.8 miles round trip with around 180 feet of elevation gain, but you can also just hike as little as you'd like or as much as you'd like. The views will mostly be the same once you enter the Belly of the Dragon, so the distance doesn't matter too much. It's like a massive tunnel and rock cave. It's a unique spot in the area worth visiting. But one note on this place, there is some rock vandalism almost everywhere you look, which is really sad. So when you're visiting these places, please make sure not to add to this. At number 47, we have Sand Hollow State Park in Hurricane. This is actually only a 10 to 15 minute drive from Quail Creek. Both of these state parks are incredible. Sand Hollow does seem to be a little bit more popular than Quail Creek. Therefore, it is much busier overall but Sand Hollow is another beautiful oasis where you'll find rich, deep blue water in Utah's Red Rock Desert landscapes. It's incredible. It's a great place for cliff jumping, swimming, kayaking, paddle boarding, and even water skiing and wakeboarding. Something worth noting here is, although I haven't personally experienced this, some of my viewers in my other videos have mentioned they have gotten swimmer's itch here. Next up is another great state park, and that is Gunlock State Park. This is another beautiful body of water in the deserts of Utah, located just outside of Gunlock, and it is only a 30 minute drive northwest of St. George. When Bree and I visited here, the water levels were low, so while we got to enjoy the beautiful water and cool rock formations, we did not get to see the main attraction, which is Gunlock Falls. Gunlock Falls is a waterfall that flows right through the rich orange desert rocks. It looks awesome. It's a 1.2 mile hike with 167 feet of elevation gain that hopefully the next time we're here we get to do. At number 49 we have Losey Canyon which is just west of Bryce Canyon. It's actually extremely comparable to Bryce Canyon but without any of the crowds. Losey Canyon is also a canyon filled with bright orange hoodoo rock formations that you can explore, hike around, and see up close. It's a great addition to a Bryce Canyon trip or a great destination all on its own. And while some of Bryce Canyon is closed during the winter, Losey Canyon is accessible year round. And last up, but definitely not least, is Angel's Landing, another iconic bucket list hike located in Zion National Park. 
This hike has been dubbed one of the most dangerous hikes in the country. Although it's really not that bad, it's an awesome hike that's only 4.3 miles round trip with 1,827 feet of elevation gain. Towards the end, you will have to go through the narrow chain section to reach the top, but once you make it to the top, the views are incredible. Nowadays, you do need a permit to do this trail. This was put into place so bottlenecks were avoided, which is actually really helpful to the trail and maintaining it, but you will have to either apply for the last minute lottery in person or ahead of time on recreation.gov's website. All right, guys, that is going to wrap up this video. This is one of the most ambitious travel guides I have ever made. So I hope you liked it. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found some new places to explore on your next Utah trip. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, check out some of my other videos and my top tens. And if you're looking for the best offline maps that you can have to help navigate you while you're hiking and in the backcountry and on some of these trails, check the link in my description for 20% off your purchase of an Onyx Backcountry Elite membership. Or if you're curious about this but don't want to buy it yet, you can start your 14-day Onyx Backcountry Elite free trial down below at my link. But if you do decide to purchase this, you will get 20% off and you will be helping me by supporting my sponsors. So thank you Onyx for sponsoring this video and thank you guys for watching. I will see you later.